Hey, baby. There you go. Is that comfy? At the Bondi Clinic, Rose has brought in 11-week-old Annika, desperate for Chris's help for the little girl's deformed leg. You're going to be very brave. The poor Akita puppy has had a rough start to life and was recently surrendered to the Animal Welfare League. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. When I first saw Annika, I saw that leg and was kind of a little bit overwhelmed. I really hope that it's not causing her any pain. That's the main thing that I'm concerned about, really her quality of life. And I'm really hoping that Dr. Chris can get to the bottom of it. Hey there. How Good are day, you? Good Chris. Rose. Nice to meet you, Rose. This is Annika. Yeah, this is Annika. And what about you? Yep. Yeah. All right, all right, let's see if we can help you. Yeah, okay. Come on in. Thanks very much. Come on in. No matter how much it feels like you've seen animals with all sorts of different problems, there's still that moment when I first lay eyes on Annika where I think, wow, what is going on with that leg? Yeah, that's like nothing I've ever seen before. Yeah, yeah, me too. Do you know much about how she came to be this way? Uh, she was apparently born like this, yep. and the owners who bred her just brought her in and uh, couldn't afford any treatment. Wow. As far as you know, there's no history of any deformities or any other problems. We think that she was part of a litter and the rest of the litter died and the mum was in labour for about three days. <sighs> okay, so it's obviously a, a pretty tough start to life mm -hmm. for, for any dog and I mean, she's, she's clearly lucky to be here if, if all the rest of them didn't make it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. She's pretty special. This sort of situation is certainly a first for me. I've never really seen a case like it. And there's a lot of wondering just how I'm going to be able to help her. And I guess if, if there's one thing that's probably a little bit sobering is that obviously the leg is, is the most obvious issue that Annika has. Mm. But to be born into a litter where none of the other puppies have survived, yep. the concern is she may actually have other issues there as well. No, oh, I really hope not. Obviously with that twisted leg being such a dominant feature, the temptation is to rush in there and just look at that. But there's every chance that what we're looking at here is a genetic abnormality, a deformity. So if you have one issue, quite often you have a second one. And that is certainly a worry. Good girl. A bit special here. Yeah? <laughs> At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is about to examine Annika, an 11 week old puppy with a badly deformed leg. Well, let's have a look over you, miss. The worry is that the little pup may also have other problems. One of those areas where you often do see a lot of problems in, in dogs that genetically aren't quite right mm -hmm. is in the cleft palate, so just in the roof of their mouth. Yeah. It's important in such a sad case like Annika to try to find some positives. And already we do have some because her eyes, her ears and her mouth are actually looking pretty good. All right, so let's just have a listen to her chest and mm -hmm. just see what's happening internally. All right, so look, the heart actually sounds pretty good. Oh, good, great. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the beats are quite clear. Mm -hmm. They're quite strong and her lung sounds are also very clear. It's a relief for Kara Rose to hear that so far, Annika is looking good. So Chris can now turn his attention to the front legs. So I can feel her, her scapula, the shoulder blade there. Hello, thank you, it's very kind. Yeah, <laughs> bit of encouragement, thank you. <laughs> and we go down to a humerus there. All right, so we're feeling pretty good. Nice, free and easy. Good. Which is very important because at the moment this this front left leg is doing a lot of work. Mm. It's really supporting that whole front half of her body. Good, yay. All right, let's look at this leg. Okay. Starting at the top, there is a shoulder blade there. Mm -hmm. So that part feels like it's, it's formed relatively normally. As I work my way down across her shoulder blade and then onto a humerus, everything's feeling pretty normal. But suddenly once I reach Annika's elbow, things take a dramatic turn. We're really 90 degrees off where we need to be, which is a long way. Yeah. So yeah, we, it feels like everything from the shoulder joint down isn't how it should be. Okay. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is examining little Annika's severely deformed front leg. We get to there, 
and that's kind of where we stop. One of the front leg's main jobs is to be able to reach forward and allow a step to take place. But in the case of this leg, the range of motion just isn't good enough. So with those toes pointing so far back, they're never going to support the weight in the position they're in. Right. And there's no clear definition of her individual toes. Yeah, right. So we know she's got feeling in the upper part of the leg because mm -hmm. she doesn't like it when I push it forward. Right. But I'm very keen to see if she's got feeling in her toes. Okay. Because that'll tell us whether we have a nerve running all the way down to the bottom of this leg. Oh, right. I'm squeezing really hard there. There's nothing there, is there? Yep, she's not responding. Suddenly, we arrive at what might be the most dramatic finding yet. Annika has no feeling in that paw. If she can't feel in that leg, it really limits what we can do with it. And obviously, I'm, at the moment, just trying to think of every single possibility we can we can come to and, and arrive at to give her the best possible life, because that's what it's all about with her. Mm -hmm. She's a puppy. She should be tearing around playing. She should be having the time of her life. But for her, short little bursts are, are even too much. Mm -hmm. Annika's a gorgeous puppy. Just the thought of her being in pain or being exhausted uh, means her quality of life is compromised and I, I can't watch a dog going through that. There's just nothing more heartbreaking and I'm choking up just at the thought of it because it's really, really sad. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, I guess, the living proof of why she does need something to be done. Yeah, that's really heartbreaking. I just want her to be okay. Yeah. What I'll do, could I get you to stand just here with her? And then I'm going to stand up this end. And hopefully when I call her, she'll come running towards me because I want to see how those legs of hers move. All right. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is continuing his examination of 11-week-old Annika and her badly deformed front leg. You can do it. Rose has brought Annika to me in the hope of me providing her with a good quality of life a positive outlook, but I can't do that unless I know exactly how she's walking right now. Annika, come on, come here, come here, come here. Good effort. Watching dogs with three functional legs walk is always an amazing thing to see, but in Annika's case, she does something that's quite surprising. So, it's obviously not easy for her, each of those steps is an effort, but she is still in the learning stage. Yep. Can we do it one more time? Sure. Because there's something that I noticed there that I want to look at more closely. Come on, baby. I keep on reminding myself of the fact that Annika's seven kilos now. She could be 40 kilos one day. Come here. Go to Come here. Go to Come here. And the way she walks right now, I don't believe is sustainable. If you look closely, at the same time that this leg goes forward, this leg here, in trying to do what it wants to do and actually walk, actually pulls back. Right. When it does that, it does something to the way she walks. It actually throws her off balance. Poor thing, that must be hard. Yeah. When walking on three legs is hard enough, having this leg do that to her is an even bigger issue for her. It's gonna be impossible. It's gonna make it really hard. The best thing now is to take an x-ray. Okay. Now, an x-ray is going to tell us exactly what's happening structurally with this leg. Right. We now know more about what's happening functionally, mm -hmm. but once we know what's happening internally with the bones, then we then have all the information we need to make a, a judgement call on what we can do for that leg. Okay. Every single step here is revealing more and more about how Annika lives her life, but if she's going to live a happy life long term, we need a solution. And that solution ultimately revolves around what's happening on the inside of this leg. So are you okay if I take her through for an x-ray now? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then I'll let you know exactly what we find. Yeah, baby, be brave. You be brave. Let's go. All right, thank you. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye. See you, Annie. It's all right. Come on, sweetheart. It's okay. It's okay. There we go. Yep. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris needs an x-ray of little Annika's front leg. X-ray. 
The 11-week-old Akita puppy was born with a horrible deformity that's affecting her quality of life. Can't say I've ever seen an x-ray like this before. This forearm here, which is you know, the equivalent of this on me, that should be about twice the length. And it's just not really going to its full distance. And these toes here, it's just essentially a little bag of bones. And looking at this x-ray really confirms that what we're looking at here is a deformity. There are a lot of different ways to interpret this result here. For me, it is a good thing. What we're seeing here is confirmation of what we've been essentially proving over the last few hours. So to me now, it's clear how we provide Annika with a bright future, how we can actually give her the rest of her life pain-free and full of happiness. There is only one answer. Hey, Rose. Baby. All right. So to me, the easiest way to open up a future is quite simply to get rid of that leg. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I guess if, if that's what you think is going to be the right thing, that's that's all I want. Yeah. There's no way of saving the leg. I think that's the thing to remember here. There's no way of putting sensation into a leg that has none. Yeah. Um, there's no way of rebuilding a leg when the bones actually uh, aren't there in the first place. Fair enough. And so that's where the challenge is. and. The positive outlook here is the fact that she'll do brilliantly <laughs> without this leg holding her back. Yeah, it's really kind of overwhelming at the moment, but uh, I know that this is the right thing and I've just got to stay strong for her. Right. Okay, <laughs> thank I'll you, see you so soon. much. Thank you. No worries. Thank you very much. Bye, Annie. You'll be a good girl. See you soon. How are you feeling? Are you ready for this? It's gonna be a good thing for you. Yeah. You're gonna be fine. At the Bondi Clinic, it's a huge day for Annika, with Chris preparing to remove the puppy's deformed front leg. How's that feeling, little one? Hmm? It's been a rough road for the rescue pup, who was born with the debilitating problem. My whole mission here is to really make sure that Annika's quality of life is improved and set her up what should be a happy future ahead. But that future won't be happy unless she can walk well. All right, let's get started. Vet nurse Liesel is assisting Chris with a difficult operation. The challenge at the moment is really working my way down through the skin, through the muscle layers, past the blood vessels to where I need to actually go through the leg. Just getting to a collection of, of nerves and, and blood vessels here. They're only small, but they can still bleed, so we're just going to clamp those off before we cut them. How's she doing? She's been stable all the way through. OK. Once Chris is safely through the layers of muscle, he can begin delicately severing the nerves in the top of the leg. Normally when you cut through nerves, like I'm doing now, you get a twitching down the leg. But as I'm cutting through these, nothing's actually happening. So it is further confirmation that for whatever reason, the nerve function to the bottom part of this leg just is non-existent. OK, Annika. Finally, the deformed leg is removed. It's actually come off reasonably well. I mean, we've, we've managed to preserve all those blood vessels. Those nerves, we've cut through those with no major problems. So now comes the next challenge. Let's sign all together. Okay, one suture to go. Okay, we are done. We're looking pretty good. It's like there was no leg there at all. Annika's has come through that operation remarkably well. When you consider how young she is and still how small she is, losing a significant part of your body like that, it is going to take its toll. From here, she just has to rest overnight and tomorrow morning we'll start to see the future Annika, the new Annika, and hopefully, the happy Annika. There you go. You threw the hardest part. Hmm? You just need to have a good sleep now. Yeah. Look at you, huh? At the Bondi Clinic, it's been just one day since Chris removed little Annika's badly deformed front leg. Ah, oh, you bounced back, haven't you? 
The 11 week old rescue pup is recovering remarkably well and is already wreaking havoc. This just says it all, doesn't it? This? Yeah? And this, right? Mm. Yeah, it's been quite the night. Annika recovered quite quickly to the point where she was licking her suture line and then decided to chew her own drip out, which is why she's now wearing the kind of shame. Get to see you now, don't we? Yeah. Look in the eyes and say, well, "Why did you do it?" Because mm. you can get away with it. That's why you did it. All right. Let's have a look at this wound. She's looking pretty good. We're not overly sore either, which is which is nice. I mean, it, it's going to be sensitive. So far, so good. I mean, she's bounced back remarkably well, and importantly, the area where we took the leg off looks healthy. All right. Good progress. Although you and your tongue already knew that, didn't they? Every indication from Annika this morning is she's ready to go. But we need to see how this body performs. Annika, Annika, come here. Annika, come here. Come here, come here. Come here, come here. Oh, yes. <laughs> Look at you go. This is the first time I've seen Annika run. Call her again. Annika. Oh, you're so good. You look at her face and it is full of delight. Suddenly, there's now so much to be excited about for Annika. And I know Rose is going to be desperate to see this. Are you ready for your moment? Yeah? Let's do it. Hey, Rose. Yes? Come out here. OK. Look at this. Wow, <laughs> I know, that's enough to tell me for a while. Seeing her run, uh, there's just no words, my heart's just bursting. I was expecting to see her, you know, look like she was in some kind of pain, but true Annika form, she's, she's fantastic, she's such a trooper. So she's in pretty good shape. Yeah. And the wound looks good, it'll suddenly yeah. flatten out okay. and really improve. Right on. Alright, well, there's only one thing left to do. Thank you so much. Hand her over to you. Okay. Glory All right. To mm. All the best. Thank you so much. You're very special to her. Thank you. Thank you for everything. No problem. That's unreal. All right. All right. We'll keep you posted. Please do. Thank you. I feel like I've got to know Annika so well, so quickly. And it's sad to see her go, but that sadness is really mixed with optimism because that personality of hers will go a long way with the right family and I'm sure she'll find it. Let's go find you a home, huh? Good girl. Let's go. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.